Hello and welcome back to Forgotten City. Let's not save Santilla today. There you go. Please. Really? Why? Why? What the hell? That was creepy. For some reason I couldn't swim up. Ooh. So yeah, let's go back. Let's talk to Ruf... 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 No, it's Rufian. <laughs> the guy we need to give the medicine for rheumatism to. And there's still two... Two guys we have to talk about... Bullying Virgil. Talk with the gladiator. Gladiator. But I think it's the... It will be Rufus. Ruf I'm very sure it's Rufus. So yeah, we still have to find a way to make Mali Lowe's uh, give up. We have to talk to Hades. Although I'm not quite sure whether we know it's Hades yet. So it may be Persephone. Persephone who is guiding us. Yes, Rufius, that's first. Oh, he's over there. It's not Rufus, it's Rufius. Are you serious? I clicked and I can't do anything. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Uh, about your rheumatism. What business is that of yours? I figure out a treatment. Eat a pinch of this willow bark, and you shall should feel better in no time. Willow bark, and this will work. Oh, thank God! Finally, some relief. This is what I've been praying for. Maybe God hasn't abandoned me after all. Thank you. I've been in a lot of pain lately. The rheumatism, these cursed statues always watching in the crisis of faith. It was too much. Started messing with my head. This is exactly what I needed to set it straight again. I owe you one. Are you the one threatening Virgil? No idea what you're talking about. Okay. Any idea where I would find a Roman plaque? No idea what you're talking about. Come on, you owe me one, remember? Uh, Alright. After this, we're square. I think I have seen that plaque. Sorry I lied. Can't be too careful these days. Head into the caves behind the theater. Turn right, then right again. Oh, and here. You'll need this key. Behind the theater? You didn't get that from me. No, of course not. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so, so that's on. it. Behind the theater? Oh, by the way, what's this? Yes, I'm trying! Believe me, I'm trying! Behind the theater. Behind the theater. Oh no. Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon! You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Do not what? go in there, just trust me. Okay, I'm behind the theater, so I'd say behind is right here.
Yes, I know I'm not taking anything. Turn right and right again. What's with all those achievements? Stone disc. A circle of stone disc with a symbol of a fish carved into it. It looks like it might be a religious nature. Like... Christian fish. There's the plaque. More fishes. Okay, so there's that. We were supposed to talk to... By the way, what's in here? I have no idea where we are. Oh, this is just another way in there, so we don't need... We don't need that medicine for him. The place is called Accursed. Here, Titus offers up his innards to be torn, stretched out over nine fields. You, Tantalus, cannot catch the drops of water, and the tree you grasp at eludes you. You, Sisyphus, attack on per per or pursue the stone that always returns. Ixion turns and follows after himself and flees, and the forty-nine bellies who dare to plot the destruction of their cousin cousins, their husbands, fetch again, with in incessant labor, the water they have lost. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. This is creepy. Probably the last bottle of wine in the city. If we ever need it. Oh! Okay, I have to admit, I didn't see that place earlier. I've never noticed that. Maybe I did? But we didn't have the bow then. Trying, it's not that easy, you know that. Let's go for the investigate Domitius. Yep, let's go for that. It's only sixteen meters that way. Oh, is is she inside those caves? No, I think she's. No, she's above. <laughs> oh, get them! Is there a way to get up there? Uh, no, we have to go all the way around. It seems. Oh, please hide your bow. Would you mind? Anyway, who are you? Eh, maybe we have to get in there. No, not going in there after the rule is broken is impossible. Olivia, you sly snake. 
Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. I figure it out. I know where we are. Say it. Speak its name. The Underworld. Then it is true. I was right. You were. I thought... I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again, until I wasn't sure if I was deceiving myself. I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. I'd found comfort in reciting the metamorphoses by our great poet Ovid. He gives such an uncanny description of this place. I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here. Would you like to hear it? Sure. I will do my best to remember the relevant verse. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend. Entombed with full rites, and the ghosts of those, at last, given proper burial. The wide, thorny waste is cold and pallid, and the newly arrived shades are ignorant of the road that leads to the Stygian city, where Black Dis has his cruel palace. As the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls, and is never too small for any populace nor notices the crowds that come. There the bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. And still others incur punishment. I hope I have done it justice, and now we share a secret. It's as if you've lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Thank you, friend. I think I should rest. Okay, so that's one loose and done. Do we have anything to talk to you about? And, uh... I hope I'm not being too forward. There's a... <sighs> Stop it. No, please, go on. What was that? Some kind of joke? If it was, it wasn't funny. <sighs> I take back what I said. Suddenly, I don't find you so intriguing anymore. Let's just forget that ever happened, so we can at least do business. So, what brings you to my tavern? I'm looking for Kabash. Have you seen him? Not for a few weeks now. Last time I saw him, he was sitting at a table with Georgius, whispering about some job. I remember because they kept looking over their shoulders as if they didn't want anyone else to know. So, uh, naturally, I hovered. The one word I kept hearing was vanishing. And then, the next day, Kabash just disappeared. Coincidence? I think not. Hmm, okay. All right, see ya. I haven't seen really... We haven't really seen this place at all. You stay away from my money! Yeah, I don't care about your money. Just looking at stuff. Your money is blood money, so I don't care about that. Yes, I know if you could be any less cryptic though. Yes, I know you would see me doing anything. Herbs rock. Oh. Well, I'm not gonna steal Anna. I know how it ends. Rudimentary door. It looks like it has been well loved. Yeah. Oh, we've been.
in here. Oh, so this is the place. Wait, been here? Yeah, we've been here. I think so. Yep. This way we go to the theater. Right. Kinda. Yep. So let's see, what else do we have? Find the fourth plate. He Blake. Old man. What old men? There's lots of old men. Oh, there's still someone we haven't talked to yet. He's somewhere below. What the heck? Wait, 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 so I'm going the wrong way. Just be lower, not higher. That's why I haven't found him yet. You. So best behavior, I trust. Whoa. As always, we wait for him down below. Look, we do have a newcomer. Strangely dressed woman. Pretty though. Funny accent too. Don't you just love a springtime? Okay, I know who the old man is. <laughs> Yep, I do remember the old man, the one who didn't say who he is. Well, please. Okay, there's a lot more butterflies in here than the last time. I just don't see a way out of here if the day ends. So I hope I can make it in time. I'll just look for all the people we have to talk to about something. I don't think we can confront the father about looking up his daughter. Hello. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? Your first. It is best you do not know my name, for merely to speak of my existence in the city above could bring destruction on you all. Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? I'm looking for Kabash. Ah, Kabash. I know this man. He came through here some weeks ago. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the golden rule? Pluto, god of the underworld. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? If I have to... Good enough for me. Now, let me begin with a question. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? I'm not sure because it's a very complex question. You are an overthinker too. Yes. <laughs> I'm the same. It is probably why I became a philosopher. But if you struggle with right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. It is. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable, because our mistakes rarely had consequences. 
So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize, and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? I suppose so. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct? Which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? I don't think so. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? I think there's no such thing as a correct morality. So is it up to each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually? Or must we simply follow the laws and customs of whichever community we're in? Uh, I think we need to decide for us. <laughs> so I think we need to follow the laws. I, none of these answers are right. So if a man feels that stoning to death his unfaithful wife is right, then is it? That's why I said no. No, that's absurd. I agree, but why? Didn't you just say right and wrong depends on the individual? If he feels it's right to kill, oh, I find I take it back. And that's a credit to you. It is the mark of a civilized person to change their position when presented with a superior argument. What's your point? My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. I'm not so sure about that. What about do not kill? Surely you would agree. There are circumstances where an exception may be made, such as where it is necessary for self-defense or to prevent a greater evil. For any rule, you can imagine there are countless situations in which that rule may be suspended, and those situations are impossible to codify. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them, and evil people will always find a way around them. And so we must accept our limitations, and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the Golden Rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs, when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. I agree. I'm glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. What's your story? Where can I find Kabash? I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. I'm with you so far. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. What did they say? We had no idea until years later, when the first of my friends began to die. 
As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. What's in there? There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. Okay, thank you. What's your story? You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I'm listening. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then, I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night, I found myself in a tavern in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. Hades? No, he is right. He's Greek, so he, he says, says he, Hades. Why can't you return to surface? My generation was wiped out, turned to gold, many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. Why can't you tell me your name? I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. Okay, you mean Pluto? They are one and the same. The Romans call him Pluto, but long before that, my people called him Hades. Where is everyone else? I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were twelve of us in the beginning, but one by one, my friends passed away. Some from malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I would not seen another person in many, many years. How have you survived down here? Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the Temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation, so I like to imagine arguments where I argue both sides. But, like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. Okay. As you wish. We you know a way out of here. Ha! <laughs> if I did, would I be living like this? What do you think about the golden rule? Did we not discuss it at the yes, end already? <laughs> oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha! <laughs> I enjoyed our chat, but please keep my presence here a secret. Yes. Of course, I will. So, we're gonna see that those catacombs. We'll do that. <laughs> we won't do that today. No, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon.
Bye.